there, cool timers. Welcome to Behind the Screen. Behind the Screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, first let's talk about um, our trip to the Renaissance Festival. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what an epic uh, day at the Renaissance Festival that ended up being. I know. <laughs> first one was, was just pretty standard, mm-hmm. and then the second one, it just got bigger and bigger and it bigger. Did. And it did. Yeah. So. Well, I... I didn't have really any frame of reference for what to expect time-wise sure. or how long it would take. So it just, it took longer <laughs> than we thought it would. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I say, and, and and because they're listening to behind the screens, I can give the rest of the people some, I don't even know if you know, because you, I don't think you've heard the edits yet, but I actually had to yeah. cut a couple scenes out. I know. Yeah. Because I, I ended up, because I had to split it. Mm-hmm. I was doing, I, there was like, there was sort of a scene towards the end of like what became part Two mm-hmm. that I was like, oh, nothing really happens in this scene. It's fun, but it's silly, and it's I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm just trying to condense, so I cut it out, forgetting <laughs> that that character comes back in a scene at the end of what is now part three. Oh, and I was right. like, oh no, that's why she put it in there. It was important, so I had to make the editorial decision of like, okay, I already cut the earlier part, mm-hmm. so I'll cut the later part. So yeah. maybe if there's a demand. Uncut. We can we can find out we can we can have the return of uh, the, the sword cut. swallower. Yeah, the sword swallower. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Because there's a sword swallower scene, which is just like a funny little scene at the start, and yep. then it comes back in the in the final battle. And so I had to like because he you know it's the ed- age old editing problem of yeah. like just because I didn't have him here, he can't show up there because yep. it doesn't mean anything. And actually, if eagle eared listeners uh, might notice that some they they talk about, I think that they because. They, the sword, the sword they get. The, yeah, the, yeah, the sword, but also the somebody gets sick, or like oh, they talked about parts. they made a joke about throwing up fudge, uh-huh. and it doesn't make any sense. But it happens so fast, I was like, oh, hopefully they just won't notice. But yeah. if they're listening to behind the screen, this is why you listen this to this. This is why you <laughs> get these tidbits. Yeah, it, there's one thing to miss though: is the barfing at the front. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the sword swallower is always a gross and grotesque moment at the Renaissance Festival. So, yeah. of course, like, if you had been here in person, yeah. you would it. have gotten to see that you, whole part. That's right. The full, un, you know, uncut version as yeah. opposed to the, the edited mm-hmm. down one. So that's because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, that's the fun about the live mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. And so. it was my first time DMing a D&D yeah. campaign. So. so what is your history with D&D? Like, when did I played it? OK, I played it with my family. I played it with my uh uh, kids okay. when they were uh, about 10 and uh, 14 um, and I just I've never DM'd it though okay. so I have a new appreciation of what it's like <laughs> on the other side of the screen yeah. uh, and how complex and and uh, how good you have to be at keeping track of things. Yeah, it's it's a lot of numbers flying around. It is. Because uh, yeah, I played d d uh, in high school, that was my first time playing, and then it was a lot of stat management that mm-hmm. I, I had trouble. You know, I had, I, and that was learning Thacko, which uh, old geeks will know what I'm talking I about. I don't know what that is. I know. <laughs> That's a, but it's like things have gotten easier. Like it used to be, like way more math and charts and stuff too. Mm-hmm. I mean, D and D prides itself on there's a role for everything. Like, right. The, like there's there's somehow there's math that can go over everything, which is uh, ambitious. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it takes a lot of brain power to try and keep mm-hmm. all this stuff going. I have only run D and D a couple of times, and I had that problem too because, like, all the players knew the systems better than I did. Because honestly, I I don't really care about systems that yeah. much. And so when you're when you're running D and D, you have to mm-hmm. because that's part of how your players see the world. Yeah. Uh, we were playing pretty numbers. fast. We and were loose. playing pretty fast and loose. Yeah, I know. But, was, but uh, obviously there's different levels of it too. I hadn't actually played D and D in probably 20 years. Oh, wow. I mean, I'd watched a lot of stuff, but like to go back and go, okay, then I have to roll and then I have to add on, you know, to remember how it all breaks down. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten a lot. Do I have to roll for this? Do I have to roll yeah. for that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then, and then continually failing. <laughs> Everything I tried to do, I, I continually failed. Yeah. Uh, do you think you would go back and do more D and D, or do you think that was like, eh, I think that's enough? I think D&D-ing the for thing now. that attracted me to the D and D was the novelty of it being created by Renaissance Festival performers. Yeah. So if I found a D and D, you know, mini campaign that yeah. was somehow unique. I think I would try it, yeah. you know, or something that was just a pure one-shot adventure. Sure. I think I would try it. Okay. Um, 
but I don't, I don't, I definitely don't think I'll be like seeking out any D and D campaigns <laughs> to run myself anytime yeah. in the, in the yeah. I would, short future. I would be having to play in one. Like that was, right. that was good right about there, but I would not have wanted to step into your shoes too, because mm-hmm. you have to be doing all of that stat management. You have to keep those numbers running for the players. Like mm-hmm. where are they at in terms of their, all their stuff and your characters, your right. NPCs, you know, your villains and stuff too. You have to be constantly going back and forth with all of that, plus their powers and all that stuff. I, I watch what, you know, Brandon Lee Mulligan or, or um, Matt Mercer does on the fly, yeah. and it just blows my mind how they could just instantly know, like, oh, no, that's actually a, you know, whatever it is. is that's an instant, not a, you need to do a, that's a vocal component. Like, mm-hmm. they have all that stuff right at their mental fingertips. And I was They're like, good at their homework. They yeah, do their homework. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, I would be just, like, constantly pulling out the book and just... Or just have like massive cheat sheets mm-hmm. of like what everybody, what all their powers are and what they all can do. Well, but then you end up having so much paper in front yeah. of you. And that was part of the problem was that I had so much paper in front of me. Right. I was like, uh, uh. at one point, I think you can hear me be like, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Oh, I found it. I found it. Here it is. Um, that was one thing I really enjoyed about listening back to it, too, is that yeah. I missed a lot of jokes because I was so focused on... Uh, what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. Yeah. I, I um, find that on my stuff too, like mm-hmm. when, when I'm running and then I listen back and realize you guys are having this nice table talk conversation and I'm just so busy focusing, focusing on the world and what else is going on. What goes I, next? <laughs> I, didn't, I don't even hear it. So yeah, it's it's nice to, to have that to mm-hmm. go, oh, they were having fun. They were having fun. Yeah, because I mean, I've never gotten to play funny. with uh, Jenny before. Yeah. So that was nice. Like, I, like, like, it would maybe like once in a murder mavens or whatever. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But then like, this was like the, like the, when it was just the three of us, mm-hmm. uh, that was really fun too, because like mm-hmm. they, they've done a lot of D and D. So they, they yeah. know it way more. They do. Than they I know did. the rules. So yeah. they know them better than I me. I knew that they could carry it. <laughs> they could carry us. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it was uh, more difficult for you too, because you were stepping into a, a halfway played, yeah. uh, uh Character right, I, I wanted to honor Dorian uh, <laughs> and not uh, mess up his character too much, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, uh, we 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 did not uh, approach death. There were no death saves. So, no, I mean, no. you know, we we ended up no, uh, surviving. No, man- managed to be pretty unscathed. Yeah. So. And you know, and we ended up changing the world. We did. So you know, you're welcome, world. There's magic in the world now. That's right. That's you're everywhere. Welcome. You know, <laughs> that's right. Don't worry about your hybrid cars anymore. Yep. Get yourself a horse or a Get dragon. Get yourself a chariot that flies on dragon power. That's right. Yes, although it didn't help out uh, Gretchen too no. much. <laughs> okay, so is Gretchen from the book too? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yep, it was all from the book. It's, okay. I highly recommend, you know, get the Perilous pages yep. if you were interested at all. There's a lot of content in there that we did not play. So sure. even as epic as it ended up, yeah. there were uh, big big characters that we didn't even visit. So you could play that and not play any of the things that we did and totally make your own adventure out of the perilous pages. Were there more knights at the end, like in the final battle? No. Oh, okay. You used all three and Gretchen? Yeah, there were three knights and then it's your party and Uh Gretchen. Okay. Yeah. The ultimate season ticket holder. Yeah, I yeah, I thought that was really was funny. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was very clever, so having all of those things in there. And it was amazing, as I was doing the edit, as it came up, she's like, and she pulled out didgeridoo, and I'm like, I already have didgeridoo music that is cleared. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to do any homework at all, because I had, I had a villain in Swashbuckling Ladies that used the didgeridoo. didgeridoo so i already had like music that was cleared that i could use that Excellent. yeah so it was nice i could just drop that in it, w- it as... made it just so much more epic. <laughs> right you didn't have to imagine that part that was interesting in the edit too to try and figure out like god there's a, it's a huge combat like how much mm-hmm. I, like i'm like i can't spend six hours editing no. this thing no. so i'm like i have to figure out what are there any things so i, I sort of like went okay no crowd mm-hmm. i wasn't because i wasn't gonna have like yeah every single time um, I had no horses. Like mm-hmm. at one point, like when everyone arrives, the like the da da da. I have like horses come riding in, mm-hmm. and that's it. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna have like constant. Cut, 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 cut. Right, exactly. I was like, okay, no. I, like I still want people to focus on the players. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and not and not all of the stuff I'm doing. I like to enhance, but not overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Like that's the the sort of my philosophy. I thought that it was very nice. All okay, the good. That you added were good. very nice. I, say, I have not talked to anyone who's actually listened to yes. it besides me. So. I and I love the when Sir F's up, uh, which sounds to me like Sir F's up, like he's F's up. 
<laughs> right. It doesn't sound like surf's, surf's up, up to right. me. Sir. It sounds sup. like Sir F's, F's up, up everything he does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which he didn't. He, he didn't. was probably the most competent person next to Sir Kill. Yes. Um, who was very hard to kill indeed. Yeah. Um, I loved that every time that he switched places, they're like, uh-huh. it was very <laughs> yeah. Bill and Ted. <laughs> That's right. I just found this nice, uh, it was just a, a simple guitar riff like yeah. in, in my little uh, catalog of stuff. I didn't have to pull it from a song or anything. They just had this like, like crunchy guitar thing. And I was like, oh, I, I, wanted was to have, I wanted to have like a, a Dick Dale sort of, you know, like the Miserlou from Pulp Fiction, but I couldn't find that exactly. But then I just found this like, and I thought, yeah, that'll do it. It was perfect. Yeah. I thought, like, I thought yeah. that worked well, too. Yeah, so it was fun every time he would go. And so, yeah, my, I decided to do it on when the roll succeeded or failed. Mm-hmm. So rather than, like, I hit it with my sword. Kink! No. I, had to, I hit it with my sword. I roll. I did, I'm like, oh, you you do it and you do three points of damage. Then I would put the sound effect. Because mm-hmm. then I could do that or I could do... Because I actually have... Um, Either impacts or I have misses too. So oh. I have like you can you can actually hear <laughs> some of them like like you can hear the mm-hmm. bl- guts. Like I have difference of like a sword hits and there's gore, or the sword hits and it deflects. Mm-hmm. So there's I have like a whole catalog of those. So I could just go back and forth between those. Well, they all came in handy. <laughs> they did. I know for once, like I had this whole thing. Like I very rarely do these ever come up, and I have a whole thing of like uh, of magic ones too. Oh. So like all different like you know fairy healing kind of stuff like there's these uh packages i got i think mostly from humble bundle and i think they're designed for like puzzle games like mm-hmm. if you're making your little puzzle games like you know you're in the enchanted woods but you're matching colors to do this stuff mm-hmm. and it's like every time you match it <laughs> so um let's okay so then that was that was our epic three-part season finale so that was so season epic. one yeah. so this is their so our audience is hearing this uh, at the end of season one, uh, right before a break. So, mm-hmm. uh, audience, uh, you'll have to go back and uh, listen to our other stuff while you're, while you're waiting for season two because we're yep. taking a little break because yep. uh, uh, season one was a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so we're taking a little break and then we'll be back with season two. So, um, tell me, just looking back um, on season one, like what are the things that stand out to you as, as we were all mm-hmm. figuring this out mm-hmm. as we went along. Well, that's the thing. I think I learned a lot about um, uh, what it is to do something that's both a live show for an audience that also is recorded into podcasts yes. by, you know, experiencing the live show and learning what works and doesn't work for that. Like, right. obviously, you know, a lot of visual stuff doesn't, <laughs> it works for the audience that's here, but yes. then it doesn't translate to the podcast. Um, yeah, that actually, so, that that was something else that says we're talking behind the scenes that I had to cut as well. Is that there was a, a scene in the Renaissance Festival where you had people balancing dice. Yeah, and it was like, and as a visual thing, it was you know for, it was fun because like the, and the audience was into it. Yeah, exactly. And they were cheering and like and like they would get to the f- you know five dice out in the sixth one, they would all crash down and mm-hmm. be like, oh. But I in the edit, I couldn't find a way to make it orally interesting because yeah. it's a lot of uh. Oh, like you could barely hear the dice fall or anything. Mm-hmm. So like that ended up getting uh, cut. Cutting the, room floor. Yeah, yeah. I had the cutting room floor. It was a barely balanced piece. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, I think I've learned a lot. And I think that season two is going to be um, uh, revealing the fruits of all of those labors. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. I hope so. I mean, that's that's our idea. We, we want to try and, yeah, it's learning that balance mm-hmm. was the tough part because we've both done audio podcast before mm-hmm. we've both done live stuff before but mm-hmm. we've never done anything that was both at the same time right uh so that that has been the interesting challenge of mm-hmm. trying to make it interesting to in in the room and interesting to everyone at home right because obviously there's more people at home than in the theater just by the nature of uh you know how space and time works exactly <laughs> exactly uh yeah, what, what were your uh, your favorite? Can you think of your favorite moments? Oh, either as either as as a Takmu or at the table. Um, I think I you know I really really loved uh, the sushi swipe. Mm, that, that was, was one fun. of my favorites, yeah. and I really loved both of the meat cutes. Yeah. So it's funny that I love the looser ones yeah. to like listen to. Right. Um, but I always try and put so many rules in when I'm uh, the tackle and in charge of the play. <laughs> well, you like structure. That's fine. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, it's I think it's uh, just the differences in in styles mm-hmm. because like mm-hmm. I like a little bit looser of a thing mm-hmm. too. Like I usually when I'm preparing something, I'll get to a certain point and I'll just and something in my brain will just go. That's enough. 
Like, yeah, I I'll, need you know, see, that's what I need is that voice. Right. <laughs> I, right. Some, but sometimes that, that has not served me well in the past because mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm in the, the absolute blank page. You know, there's mm-hmm. one thing to be, you know, from the the set to the blueprint. Right. But then when it's to the absolute white space, then all of a sudden it's like, <gasps> like the flop sweat no, starts of like, do? I don't know what's going to happen. Nah, like a really, really that's good when you need your improv skills. Yes, exactly, which yes. I don't have a lot of. So that's <laughs> it's, that's the balance back and forth. Yeah, we were, when we were talking uh, the, the here at uh, Neighborhood Comedy Theater, you just celebrated your 35th, 100th mm-hmm. performance mm-hmm. and had a big gala. So I got to come to that too. And as we were talking on there, somebody was said to me like, oh, you should do up there and do something. And I was like, no. How much you have? No. You've been a oh, storyteller. I have been a storyteller. That's true. I, I have gotten to, I t- I've gotten up there and told you, I don't, I don't have a problem in front of crowds. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I can tell a story and then I get to sit down and then you guys do your improv do you stuff. Other. Yeah. To be actually standing and doing improv stuff, like even when you turn to the audience and say, give me a place, my mind goes absolutely white. <laughs> like as I was sitting there, was going, I, I, I don't know any places. I don't know, like, it's it just, I don't have that thing. But when we're talking about structure, when I'm up there and I have, like, it's a grocery store, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen now. All right, let's see. Let's and I, see. and that is that is where I can improv when I sort of have four walls built. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like, that, then, yeah. I'm, then I'm okay. And I, and I feel like that's where any improv skills I have, that's where they, they come to fruition. Mm-hmm. But if you say, you know, like basically you, like the, uh, probably, okay, you're in a bakery and you're Jean-Claude Van Damme and, you know, and then all of a sudden you got to go, Hey, hi, hi. Hey, can I, uh, hey, yeah, <laughs> the Welcome muscles from bakery. Brussels, <laughs> can I have a muffin? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that, that that I'm I'm out I'm out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So watching you guys do that is is always a magic trick to me. So it's interesting though, the difference though, because you as a trained improver want structure. Yes. And I as not a trained improver am good with being loose. Yes. Well, and that's one of my we goals are for season two. We contain multitudes. Yeah, is to uh, is to try and sound less bossy when I'm the tack mill. <laughs> I don't think you sound bossy. Oh, well, to me, to my ear, it sounds like I'm being like. Are you gonna look around? Are you? <laughs> well, how about you look for clues. As as we as let's say as we were figuring out, our our friends were very mm-hmm. kind to come along, not really knowing this because I don't think honestly in in this in this self assessment period as we're looking back on season one and playing season two, I don't think we did a good job of explaining what we wanted <laughs> to our cast. Yes, like uh, I don't see. think that we had a, we did a good job of like telling them kind of what we wanted, mm-hmm. and we just went like, oh, it's like role playing. You just go up and you just do stuff. Do your and stuff. Then, yeah, because as the season went on, through Murder Mavens and Sushi School and 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 Me Cute and all that kind of stuff. They got better yeah. because I think then they started to get it. Mm-hmm. They understood what it is that we were trying to do. Yeah. That's not just a basement game, but it's also not uh, a long form improv. It's mm-hmm. somewhere in the middle. And um, uh, I think that I just completely lost the thread of what I was going to say. Oh, uh, <laughs> part of learning that, too, was that we didn't need as many people. Yes. Uh, to be in the cast. Three is the ideal amount three is, of people yeah, for the three cast. Three is pretty Not good. Four, I wanted five, or I was like, I need six. <laughs> I, I think when we, when we did our first test one, there was six. There and it was, was six. like, there's a lot of people. Yeah. And, it's and I was small like, stage. we need more people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've, Less learned, is more. we've learned so many valuable lessons yeah. over the course. Yeah. So season two is just going to be upwards and onwards. Yeah. I think, um, I think we're going to do a little more. Technically too. We've... Yeah. Technically too. We've, we were trying mm-hmm. to improve our audio quality. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's recording a live show is not an easy thing and, and learning with reverb and distance and microphones and sensitivity and all these things. Human totally beings different. with their own exactly. vocal sounds. People who talk volumes. louder and people who talk softer and having to, you know, balance all of that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's been a learning curve too. So that's one of our goals too. Mm-hmm. I see aspirationally, like down the line, if like we can, you can keep it going. I really would like to eventually let people see us. Yeah, I like, would like it would be too. really nice down the line if we were able to like live stream something or yeah. even even maybe record it first and put it on YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but let's like, that. We I think we have the content pretty well good. Yeah. Like I think we're like now we sort of understand we can play in that space. Mm-hmm. 
the audio is getting better once we sort of have that locked down then i think we can sort of look visual yeah exactly then you'll have to look at us that's right cool timer right <laughs> They could, both. They can choose. Like if they could just, if they want to just imagine what the character. They don't want to like, you know, see your face and have an octopus. Oh God, you know, that's what Chrissy looks like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I meant, I meant more like they want to see an octopus. They don't want to see right, your face, right. you know, uh, when, with Graspy. As uh, octopus-like as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think you would want to um, return to? Well, I think I'm definitely going to return to Murder Maven okay. at some point, although I am out of like pre-planned Ooh. Brindlewood Bay content. So You're into would the have wild to be, woods now. Exactly. I have <laughs> to make up my own content. Okay. Uh, but I do I do love a murder mystery and a 80s revival TV show. So I okay. think I will revisit the Murder Mavens. And I think I'm going to do some more exploration in, you know, what some of my interests, which are, you know, supernatural ghosts, hauntings, yeah. things oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah. yeah. I've been wondering, I mean, obviously, I, I have a ghost thing. So I'm also yeah. I'm a big ghost fan. I think uh, early in season two, they'll, there's a uh, spectral themed adventure yes. that they'll be hearing. Uh, uh, with it, with sort of a different group uh, of uh, people that mm-hmm. new voices they haven't heard before, so that'll yep. be interesting. Yeah, and a new tack move. A new tack move. That's right. Yeah. So and and uh, actually, uh, yeah. There's there's uh, uh, another one of our players I have uh, challenged to become a tack move as well. Uh, so we'll see um, in season two of like what that uh, what that looks like. So it'll be interesting, sort of as we're sort of mixing and matching, uh, trying to match. Kind of interesting stuff, interesting stories, interesting ways to tell yeah. them. I think yeah. I think we'll, we'll we'll return to meet cute. I think that's really going to be good. Excellent. I think we have at this at this point we have a live show for that planned, not Yay! at the American Comedy Theater. Uh, <laughs> by the time they, they yeah, no, actually no. By the time you when you're hearing this, it won't it will not have happened yet. But I I'm not going to promise it because I don't. I don't control all the media mm-hmm. on that side, so I'm trying to record it, but I can't yeah. promise it's going to happen. That's everything that happens at Phoenix Fan Fusion, yeah. which we're doing a couple different things That's at right. Fan Fusion. Like, there's no promises that it's ever going to get to you. So. Yes, exactly. I've had, Be there live. I've had a handful of panels that have, have survived and a handful of panels that did not. Same with a, me. Same a, with me. A couple yeah. that I have bits and pieces of, you know, mm-hmm. little little segments, but uh, the you know the entirety has been lost yep. to time. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm fingers crossed. Uh, Fingers but we're gonna do it. But uh, yeah, it should it should be. Uh, so yeah, I think we're gonna be we'll be doing some new fun stuff. So thank you all for coming along with us mm-hmm. uh, along season one. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we have to go because we have to record a season two episode. Season two. We'll be uh, we're about to uh, head into space. So that'll tell you approximately where we are in the timeline when you uh, get that done. We're so, excited. So thank you for joining us on this weird, wild adventure. Cool timers. Uh, and I hope you uh, enjoyed season one. I hope you'll stay around for season two. And, uh, you know, drop us a line. Hit us up on social media. Yeah. Find us in all the places. Tell us what you want to see. Yeah, exactly. What did you like? Again. What do you want to have more of? Yeah. So. Don't tell us what you want less of. No, we don't want to hear that. Only tell us what you want more of. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have a sign-off, so I think that's it. Not yet. Have a dice time, cool hours. <laughs>